On March 18, 1965, Russian cosmonaut Alexei Leonov became the first human to float in space. Not to be outdone, the United States sent astronaut Ed White into outer space just three months later. You're right, you're right, Ed. You're looking beautiful. I feel like a million dollars. He floated for 20 minutes and loved every bit of it. Floating around is fun and easy. The next American would have to do more than just float. Gene Cernan would try to find out if humans could do work in outer space. I was going to go out and I was going to have to do legitimate work. I had to basically assemble a whole flying backpack outside the spacecraft in zero gravity through a nighttime cycle where I had little or no light. Cernan was supplied oxygen from an umbilical hose that passed through an open hatch. His commander, Tom Stafford, seated inside, piloted the spacecraft. Cernan quickly discovered that handling even simple objects was extremely difficult. Every time I'd push or turn a valve, it would turn my entire body in zero gravity. I had, I had nothing to hold on to. And, it, and we take for granted gravity because we can do that kind of work with ease if something is holding our feet to the ground. Nothing was holding me anywhere. Within minutes, Cernan was sweating from the extreme effort it took to control his movements. Within a few minutes, he fogged over. We were so naive, we didn't even think about putting defog on our visor like you, you do when you go snorkeling or scuba diving. And so he was huffing and puffing, and I was flying the spacecraft. He says, Tom, I've got a hard time controlling myself. And it was a very, in retrospect, um, somewhat of a hair-raising thing. And there were probably times where there were people down here on Earth wondered whether I'd get back in because my heart rate was running at 100 and 70 beats a minute. I said, hey, this is not a good situation at all. So I, I called the ground and the contact said, I've called it quits. I'm going to get him back in before we go into the next night time. Got him in. Finally, he just couldn't hardly move. And then when he opened his visor, he was absolutely pink, like he'd been in a sauna about an hour too long. The next day we landed and they flew the suit right back to Houston. They had over a pound or a pound and a half of water out of each boot. But he lost, I think, 10 pounds, 10 and a half pounds in two hours and five minutes outside. NASA was now determined to find out what went wrong. As engineers, we started saying, look, we've had three missions where the EVAs didn't go well. What was wrong? Then we had a science advisory team step in and say, look, your entire principles of EVA are wrong. How you train, how you prepare the crew. Everybody forgot Newton's third law of motion. To every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. And when they touched the spacecraft, the spacecraft repelled them. Although weight is reduced in outer space, the mass of an object is unchanged. To move a mass, force must be applied. Newton's third law predicts an equal but opposite reaction. On Earth, gravity would allow Cernan to gain a footing and counteract the reactive force. But in outer space, the reactive force sent him reeling. Having learned a difficult lesson, NASA's next capsule was built with special handholds and footholds to anchor the astronaut in place. Most importantly, NASA began training astronauts underwater, the closest environment on Earth to weightlessness. The new training and tools made a big difference for Buzz Aldrin, the next American astronaut to do work in outer space. I, I felt that it was a piece of cake outside, just m moving very slowly. Uh, there was no challenge. You decide that you're going to move in a certain way and you need leverage, so you, you just don't allow yourself to get out of position. <laughs> 